All right, Bing Bang, welcome to Dave Portnoy Show with Eddie and Company, presented by High Noon. Dave, weekend full of high noons, I'm sure. Yeah, real vodka, real juice. Um, over only 100 calories, gluten-free, no sugar added. Real vodka, real juice, real fans, just like that. Uh, us, yeah, it's, uh, it's all I drink now, obviously. Um, and I've been on the passion fruit train nonstop. They got to come out with the passion fruit in the, in the four packs. That's, that's almost my new mission in life. But I like them all. Right now, my power rankings, passion fruit one, pineapple two, watermelon three. Can I tell you something, though? I, I We talked about this last week. You're sleeping hard on peach. No, I don't, I, I, I've had them all. Lime is four. So, Really? I think yeah. peach is. Peach might be my one. Peach is awesome. Mm, peach, mango, grapefruit. Black cherry, those ones I generally leave. I like them all, but the others are by far my favorite. Gotcha. Well, go check it out. You decide for yourself what you like. They're at pretty much all liquor stores at this point. They're everywhere right? now. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got to go to liquor stores. New York, if you go to a beer place, you're not going to find it because you'll find, truly, you'll find uh, White Claws. You'll find all the ones that are malt based, not vodka sodas or whatever you want to call them um a little that that's why by the way if we did a blind taste test high noon would win every time because it's actually vodka soda just simple like it says juice and soda yeah people don't know that too like people like to you know waffle at the price a little bit but you're paying more for quality like the others are beer based. they're malts there's all these chemicals to make it seem like a high noon but they're not the same thing Yep, exactly. So go grab some high noon. Um, all right, today's show, we are recording on Monday. We had to move it up. You got something going on on Tuesday. So, Serge, I'm flying to Boston. I saw, and I, I'm going to be honest. I'm petrified. Not petrified, but I'm due to do the hair surgery. Like, hair surgery is like a boob job. Every, like, five or six years, you got to just redo it to keep it, like, because it wears out. I don't know that I totally need it, but... A part of me is like, well, I might as well do it. I'll be happy that I do it. It'll probably be the last time I do it because who cares? After age 50, like, who gives a fuck? But it fucking killed the first time I did it. Like, it hurt way more than I anticipated. I was out of commission, I think, for like two weeks. Like, it, it's a big deal. So that is Wednesday. So I'm flying to Boston because that's where I do it. Um, I did it at Jeffrey Leonard Associates. He retired. But I, uh, I'm kind of having panic attacks about it. You've been needing this for a while, though, right? You've just kind of been putting it off? Uh, I've been due for it. It's, it's hard for me to find, like, seven to ten days where I can just totally clear my schedule. So March Madness is around the corner. Um, this, will, this, will, this is the only time I found that I could squeeze it in. Have you noticed, like, a difference? Like, has, it, has your hair changed? No, not really. No. no. Gotcha, so... You're but right. I, there's a part, there's like a 7% chance I cancel it. Just never do it again because it sucks to go through. What was it like? It was just it like sucks. St it stings? It, you're, it, it hurts a lot. Like, and then I thought I'd be like fine 24, 48 hours later. You're not. Like I was out for two weeks. Like it, it just, your whole head's numb. I mean, it's a surgery on your head. Yeah. Worth it though. It looks good. Yeah, no, I'm glad I went through it. That's why I keep telling myself it's like for a week to 10 days of discomfort to have solid hair for the next six years, seven years, it's worth it. Ask yeah. Paul. He's bald as fuck. He's going to wear a hat all the time, everywhere he goes. If he could just have hair, it would be a big relief. Be worth it. Yeah. Paul, you were sitting there waiting for that, weren't you? I, was, I knew you guys were talking about it. I knew how that train was coming. It was late for a minute there. <laughs> why didn't you go suck. see his guy? Well, is that what? on the plan? Is why didn't you go? Why didn't you set, hook him up here, Dave? Is this part of the plan? He's way for, too uh, bald. He's yeah. he's way too gone. Like this hair is all mine. Like there's nothing in the front. It's just that back crown. Yeah, I went like crown. ten years ago, and it was yeah, it was. Then I would have had to do it. It's too it's too far gone now. We're out. How old You're were you? You're supposed to do it at my state. Well, not supposed to, but like I like you. You wouldn't even know I had it. You know, I have a pretty full head of hair. Yeah. You just had it in the light, like the guy who would snipe you with yeah, the, the videos. Back. No, was, I was losing it in the back. I was losing mm -hmm. it in the crown. Yeah. How old were you when you lost it, Paul? Uh, it started to go at like 25, 30 oh, yeah. feet now. So, yeah. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah. So, so you're going for that. You're going to Boston for that, Dave. So, we're uh, – 
We moved it up a day, and we're going to have kind of like a ro- Royal Rumble of sorts. We're bringing in well, a bunch of yeah, people. Yeah, I saw Content Kim tweeted that she's coming on. I haven't been following. I asked Paul if it was real. I was pretty confident that Alex was tweeting on her behalf for a while. I saw her saying that she's coming on. Um, I haven't followed that overly closely. What the fuck's going on there? Cool. So we'll get the scoop on that. Uh, Rico and Dan are going to come on as well, uh, kind of talk about uh, a tweet that you had that Kind of uh, ruffled some feathers over the weekend, and uh, and so hey, not uh, not to ransack the show, but there was a blow up at the office this morning by Rico. Yeah, I heard that. Dan texted me that he uh, may have stormed out of his new show before it started. I, so. Dan texted me that he maybe someone needed a nap, but I he didn't say more. Yeah, Billy Football. I have a video. Video Billy Football is basically invading his territory of his desk, and there's a oh. uh, turf battle going on. Hmm. And that Enrico took a nap. I just heard that he stormed out and he's like, I don't have a desk. I guess I'm not going to work and stormed out. Hmm. Trigger. Trigger. Yeah. So is trigger, he here? Trigger. Is Rico coming on the show? Yeah, he's coming on. He's coming on a little later. We're going to okay. do the Kim and the mean girls first. And then we're going to bring in Rico and big cat. Okay. Um, to kind of talk about Wisconsin and Greg Gard and everything. Uh, so we'll start with this. We'll start with the content meeting. I feel like, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you I'll let you speak on it first because there was a lot of stuff coming out afterwards. I don't know if you saw that or not. No. Uh, so the content meeting, I think we talked about it on the show, did we? I don't know. Any, anyway, it was basically I, uh, my main thrust of the content meeting is Jen left Jen Simons and she was really, I guess, I don't know how you want to describe it. A lot people are going to her for content ideas. And I think if she said no, people are like, okay, I can't do it and we're discouraged. I've never felt that way. I think people should be allowed to do whatever they want, but where there's a disconnect is that doesn't mean we will give you resources to like create content. We won't give you necessarily camera people. We won't pay for travel, things like that budget. But this iPhone here, you should be able to create enough content for your idea to launch it on your own. And then if it starts doing well and people are talking about it and show interest, then we can decide to put resources behind it and try to blow it up. But people have a big advantage at Barstool um, by having the network of people uh, to help promote just the name and your social media that you can create content and ideas without it needing our full support or support and people have a green light to do that um they should also be aware if it's working or not work at working and not just banging their heads against the wall and if things they're doing aren't working over a long course of time maybe look for other things to do there's plenty of ways to help other people and make yourself more valuable so i think that was the gist of it yeah, and you're right. It was nothing we haven't really talked about the last two weeks on the show. Uh, for some reason, on Twitter afterwards, it got kind of misconstrued. There was uh, someone said, like, Chap stood up to you. I that don't was think Tico. That... Tico's a crazy yeah. person. Like, anyone who who takes anything Tico says, like, at true, like, face value has just met Tico. Uh, I didn't take that as Chaps. Chaps and Coley said things that I didn't totally agree with, but it wasn't. The way Tico said it made it sound like confrontational, and it just wasn't at all. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like if you're a listener right now, I know you're expecting some salacious thing. It really wasn't at all, like at all. No, no. Uh, I mean, Tico blew that so far out of proportion. Like she didn't intentionally do it. Just Tico doesn't know what she, like, Tico's Tico. There yeah, was- I think just the way she worded it, people like jumped on it. It's not even her fault completely, but. Um, and then there was. I mean, I, what I, about her and Nate? Chaps asked the question. Is how I would phrase it like chaps ask the question really yeah like i didn't hang up and be like oh that was weird with chat like i i didn't even know what tico was talking about stood up to david she asked a question and then tico just attacked nate which (laughs) (laughs) what did you uh does it does it get you a little excited when people go at the dog listen i he gets a bad rap i do believe like, people think he has an agenda. And, oh, there he is. Oh, that face. Uh, <laughs> people think he has, like, an agenda. And, you know, like, he will choose to publish or not publish based on personal feelings. He's also a not likable guy. We all know that. 
but I he's doing his job. He he wants articles that are good and up to a certain quality and if they're good regardless if he likes you or not he will publish i do believe that that's his job i think there's always going to be um a degree of uncomfort with whoever the editor or editors are whether that was me when i was doing it um k marco certainly ran into it uh and and i i think nate to a degree could be like Coley's bag man, you know, like he, he people like Coley more than Nate. So if they have a problem, they blame it on Nate, even though it may be Coley who is the one deciding what's happening. I, I talked to Coley and I have believed this from the beginning. They are publishing what they think is in the best interest of the blog to get the most views, well written articles. There is no agenda that it's just a combined fact that people may not always like Nate, and Nate isn't the most you know, soft and cuddly guy to get along with. So there's a back and forth, but I do not believe any of the rumors or accusations that he plays favorites. And that's why things are going up or down. So Nate yeah. just jumped on Nate. Welcome to the show. Uh, a nice compliment before you were served a vicious insult. So I Nate, you could speak your piece. I didn't insult anybody. I just said the truth. That face, that bald head is a lot to take in when you haven't seen it in a while. It just pops up unannounced. I miss you, Dave. It's like a <laughs> goblin. All right. Nate, Nate, thoughts on that statement? Uh, no, what Dave just said is 100% correct. Um, I, I can't believe Keith used to have to do this by himself. We have a team of three, and it's, it's, it's a lot of uh, managing egos. It's a lot of just back and forth. I spend a lot of my day going back and forth uh, talking about like titles. Can I use this picture, this and that, just trying to get the best stuff up that won't get us sued. And honestly, if I had it my way, like 40% less would go up on the blog. I, I think the blog has become um, kind of like a make a wish foundation in terms of Dave, so you'll is, hire someone on a whim. why people do not like this is why sure. people are like, Nate, so I'm not going to feel bad about throwing arrows at no, Nate. No, I'm just going to be, hey, Dave, um, we're nothing if we're not honest. We're no. nothing if we're not honest. You, you hire people on a whim uh, if they're fat or they make you laugh one time in a video, and then you say, go blog. And then it becomes the responsibility of myself, Coley, and Hubs to now manage this person um, while you gallivant around Miami. So what we have to end <laughs> up doing is – say this person is bad at blogging or maybe their best interest isn't to be a blogger, we still have to make sure that they're producing and that they are giving value to the company. And so it does get uncomfortable when you have to say, this isn't good enough to go up. And then they start going into panic mode. Well, I'm being paid, but you're not letting me put my stuff onto the internet. What am I supposed to do? And it just puts everybody in a really tough spot. Well, like, you know, either figure something else out or like, you know, we will put stuff up that I don't think is good enough to go up. It, it just puts everybody in a really, really difficult position. That's life. Um, yeah, no. And that's I'm gonna why... have, to have a tongue's right. And, and I think, I don't know how much Nate talks with the writers. Like that's something I tended to try not to. It's like, if it's not good enough. It's not good enough. It's not my job to hold hands. But even Nate, if he'll recall when now it's a different world when, when Nate, was brought on we had far fewer people so nate yeah. in the beginning and k <laughs> yes, marco did, even to the beginning like their blogs weren't always good but there was more time to sit down like i remember rewriting some of nate's in the beginning or even k marco's but yeah. there was less so there's more time to be like well this is it and dan would do it we have a lot more that's something as we grew it's like if it's not good i don't i it's I can't walk you through that process. And by the way, it's no guarantee if you spend, this is always the analogy I've used a lot lately. Writing may be a little easier, but if someone throws 87, I can't just be like, amp it up, throw 95. That, you may not have that in your bag. So it, it's like, how much can you put? Some people are more talented in certain areas. It's like, how much time? So it, I get what Nate's saying and, and I, feel it and I agree with it and I do always think it, it people just romanticize the early days sometimes of blogs I had a queue of so many blogs that never made it yeah. and people would fucking complain 
I'm like, well, I'm not publishing it. I don't think it's a standard. And Nate is right. The standard is far lower now than it was. That In that aspect, people are right. Early blogs, when it was, you know, me, Dan, Kevin, K. Marco to start early, the only people writing, that's all we were doing. We are putting up a blog every 45 minutes. Every blog was basically fire. So, so yeah, the I blog is better. We, we, but we've moved. Like, we've moved. The, the internet, we wouldn't be around if we were just doing the written word now. So, but it's still very important. Yeah, I, I, I've thought about and, and talked, you know, how numbers would change if we made, if we just totally revamped the blog and went back to every blog is must read, no, no, no filler, no X and O's of the, the uh, Grizzly versus Magic game last night. Just every blog has to be must read or like podcast inside Barstool type of stuff. And, you know, maybe we cut down 40% of blogs, but every single thing, when you're refreshing it, like it's going to be fire. And, you know, there, there's all that balance where, you know, well, we need to keep the blog going. We need, you know, page views, blah, 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 blah. But will page views go up if quality goes up and people make it a must visit website again? Because, you know, the internet is kind of out of websites. There's Twitter, Instagram, Reddit. Where else do people go? I want Barstool to be, uh, you know, I have to go see what's going up next. And you're not going to be bogged down with eight blogs about, you know, um, just whatever, like just Nate's right. Nate, and by the way, I'd be happy to hire just writers. The the if we found them, the, the truth of the matter, it's I think, so hard. That's very hard. You get in here, you write, you see what other people writing is. I don't think there's anybody here who would say writing is easier or more fun than being on radio, doing a podcast. Those are easier genres and. Frankly, that's where a lot of advertisers are spending money now. So to think you'd go back to the world, and it, it, even if you got the blog to that place, is probably far less profitable than what is going on outside. So it is hard to do it, and you have to find a balance of – because if you look at, like, KB, he's an example. He's a fantastic writer, but he yeah. does a lot of other things. So, you know, he was brought in to write, and I don't even think he intended to be, like, on camera as much, but – what happens 100% of the time here? And it happens with Nate, too. Like, the other stuff is more glamorous and gets your attention. Bill Simmons, anybody. It's a natural – like, Simmons doesn't write like he used to or even close to. That's just no. a natural – and by the way, he's almost a good example because I don't think anybody in a million years would be like, there's nothing Bill Simmons has done that he is as good at as just sitting down and writing. But he doesn't want to do it anymore. He does everything else. Would and you ever by the way, he's won a shit. He's made a shit ton of money the other way. Yep. Would you ever incentivize uh, people writing like, hey, Kyle, I know that you're busy, you know, 100 percent. If we but... could come up with. Well, again. It has to be. And this is where it goes full circle with Erica in their business side, like to incentivize him would mean page views and things like that. Are we able to monetize that as if we're going to be, he's an important part of the yak, for example, things like that. So it's a full circle thing. My yeah. impression on the business side and where Barcel definitely sometimes isn't as connected, hopefully will be now is I think ad budgets are moving. They're not, well, they've already moved. It moved from writing the podcast. I think they're moving from podcast. So it's like, you know, can we monetize, even if you created what you just described, Nate, which is you have the blog, your every blog, it's almost like I, I remember at times in the old blog, I had so many good ones in the queue and I knew I had to get them out. It's like, how do I arrange these where they all get out? Let, even if you got back to that world, I don't know that that pays the bills. Are, are bloggers like making the types of salaries that a PMT is making by doing, probably not. Or spit and chiclet. So it's a it it's that balance. Yeah. But I will say, I don't think Barstool, despite everything we have, in terms of truly entertaining people, was ever stronger than when the blog was just fired. Despite we're bigger and call our daddy and spit and chiclets and PMT and pizza, in terms of literally laughing out loud, 
It'll never go back to that, but there's a variety of reasons. I mean, if I go back, I look at the old blogs that I wrote, Dan, like Kevin, they're all laugh out loud funny. Now, and we also, by the way, can't say half the shit. Like I go yeah. back and read it. And I'm like, whoa, like I better call somebody and get this blog off the internet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I stumble upon that every once in a while where I all text Colby. Like, I think we have to take this one down. Yeah, I mean, like, it, how we're viewed now, how we're perceived now would never fly. I mean, and, like and it's, it, it's not even that either. There's stuff you could say on this show. You can't say on the blog. It's, for some it's reason, not, uh, written word, the written and word, a podcast, but the, the, the green monster and co they'll get their hands on a blog and they'll just yep. go after you. The, the written word is for whatever reason, much more explosive because people can just quote it, put it, take it out. Almost everything we've got in trouble for, with the exception, I guess, of me talking about Ponder on that podcast, everything else is written word. Like the yeah. size six, if that was said in a conversation back then, that would never seen the light of day. No. Yeah, and, and just to circle back, yeah, from what you were saying in the beginning, that's what we spend a lot of our days doing just as editors and just – there's a lot of people who just tiptoe the line or just a lot of people think that th their opinion has to be seen by the world. Even if you say no politics, like, well, I, I need to speak on like, no, you don't like, it's just, it's not worth a lot of times the juice is just not worth the squeeze on the blog and it sucks. It, but it, just And again, I will say this about Nate and I think everyone knows I'm pretty honest. Nate truly cares about, Barstool. Like that's, he may not be overly likable, but he's very vested in our success and he has been for a while. So I will know. say I internally, uh, like coworkers, writers, content makers, I, I'm respected. I think stoolies don't think that, or I don't know if they like me so much, but, but like I mean, Dante I working, and I had a call. Dante doesn't like you. I no kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> well, you just said that. Now, by the way, I like Dante, but like we had a, a real Dante's example. Dante's a good headache to have. He works nonstop and he cares totally, a lot about Barstool. Which we'd always rather have that. But I had yeah. this example with Dante where he thought a block, like, and I was talking to Coley. Like, Coley complained. <laughs> Coley, Dante wrote a blog. Coley edited it. Dante complained about Nate in the blog to the point that Coley went in and edited it and put his name where he was writing, like, Nate changed that. it. Coley had to go and put, like, I changed it. So, again, I, I, I you know, Nate, Nate. Let me speak on Don, Don, Dante gives us a headache every day, but he cares. He's, he's passionate. He just doesn't want to follow the rules that we have to put in so the website can exist. Like, he wants it to be Barstool 2006, and unfortunately, it just isn't. And it's just, it's a lot of push and pull with him because we love that he writes so much and that he loves doing it and that he's like putting up blog after blog after blog. That's a great problem to have. Yeah, but, and you praised them on one of the calls. He, he's good. I was just going over all the, all the Nate stuff. It, I guess that's what I'm saying. Like, Nate, Nate is a very good editor. I, I don't need to be loved. I just have to do my job well, that you obvious. and Erica gave me. Like, I still have to do the job that I was given the best of my abilities, like, regardless of who it is. And some people listen and are more easy to manage than others. And that's the battle that I signed up for. So, like, it's that, just, is that is the editor. And by the way, I don't think that's necessarily like unusual for Barstool. I, and I've said the same thing with Paul, with social. There should always be a tension, I believe, between the yeah. editors and the writers or the people. Like, Paul should have to tell people, I want on social people up Paul's ass to be like, why don't you give me more promo? Why, that, like, that is, you should want that. That's good. That's yeah. me. You want to get out and get it out there. That's part of the deal. One yeah, thing I want to If you spend time, it's frustrating. I won't want to do it. You spend time on a blog that you think is good, and then someone's like, no, it's not, and you just wasted your time. But that's, that's the nature of the game. That I always go back to SNL, um, you know, SNL or uh, sports. Everyone wants the skit. Everybody wants to air during Saturday Night Live. Not everybody gets to get on air. And by the way, if you look back at SNL, there's examples where they missed. It. We're not perfect, but you have to do the best you can. Did did, before I came on, did you talk the Tico stuff or no? 
A little. A I got to get okay. Tums. Continue. I said Tico's a crazy person. Okay, you yeah, that, that's all it is. Like, <laughs> but, but you two are well. two. I love Tico, but you two are two personalities where, you know. Well, she means well. It's just, it's, it's just, she's a bad headache. You know, it's like you have to. Oh. Well, yeah, it, one it, one thing that should be cleared up for the dog is the dog doesn't control what goes on Twitter for blogs. That's, that's <laughs> no. People, Nate dog got railroaded. I'm not going to say who tweeted it. Tico it was it was Paul who tweeted it. I, I'm not. I'm not. DM'd I'm, it. I'm not in the the place to say who did that and stirred <laughs> that up. But but it was Nate got railroaded and it, he doesn't post the blogs. Hubs and his team does do it, but it's not Nate that actually decides what blogs go on Twitter. Um, I, I don't have passwords to the main account. Whoever, whoever uh, tweeted from the main account to Tico that Nate's in charge was just being a just being a dick. Probably mm -hmm. drunk at live one night and felt like having <laughs> some. I don't fun. know who it was. I wish we could track it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, any more comments about her, Nate? Then we'll cut you loose here. Sure. No, she means well. It's just uh, we did the whole. <laughs> it, you know, it's just she just another another person to manage. It 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 keeps us on our toes. Uh, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. I wish Tigo did more. We don't get a lot out of her, but uh, I wish we got more out of her. Let me say this. I said this also on the blog, on the call. The number one thing for any content people is they should think, if I told Dave I'm leaving or got another offer, would Dave be upset and try to keep me? Nate, if he said he was leaving, that, that would be bad for us. Thank you. Wow. That's actually so, extremely nice to hear. It's extremely nice, so I hate to do this, but can we, can we get a crack and A update? Well, oh, that's yeah. just a little pet project that I let him do because he asked. But I mean, I've been right about that. But I'm right about a lot of stuff. But I've been wrong about stuff. That's that's ne here's that's my third job. You know, like we do it for fun. We just the fellas talk poker for an hour a week. You know, throw up some tweets, throw up some IGs. It doesn't. I don't do it on company time. Just we do it for fun. Just the fellas talking cards. He's earned that right, and as long as it's not interfering with the other stuff, presented fine. by Whistlepig. Drink it. Is that a real thing? Yeah. Pre presenting <laughs> sponsor, Dave. Uh, Nate, thank you. You're going to have a great day. A great week, I feel, after this. Thank you. Um, I'm always honest with Nate. Ugly, but works hard. <laughs> and it's going to be overly sensitive, but whatever. I've gotten wow. better. I've gotten better at that. Yeah. You're, you're very realistic in certain roles. Like when you right. thought I shut down Nate at night or like it was unfair. I, whatever. Yeah, correct. No. <laughs> that like was unfair. Nate, if Nate the editor <laughs> yeah. had to deal with Nate the on camera personality, <laughs> they'd hate each other. That's actually very funny. <laughs> so. Nate, thank you. Um, that, was, that was a great talk. Love you guys. Yeah, thank you, Nate. Thank you for all you do here. Um all right, let's bring in uh, Kim and the Mean Girls. Let's talk about Felix Gray before we do, Dave. You got you rocking a pair right now. Mm-hmm. Different, different frame. It looks. I don't like. want to give these guys free ads, here, but Tom's is turning into the most important people in my life. I just have heartburn all the time. Um, Felix Gray, I'm wearing them right now. If I don't wear them, I get twitchy eyes at night. Like I look at screens, I need them. Blu-ray, they keep my eyes. I'm on the computer 24/7. They are the best blue light glass on the market. Go to FelixGrayGlasses.com slash Dave. FelixGrayGlasses.com slash Dave. Uh, if you've paid attention for the last couple of years, I just wear them 24-7. This is a new style that i kind of getting used to because I don't know where the others went. Um, they filter 15 times it. more blue light, make the screen tough on eyes and disruptive to sleep. They are the best blue light glass on the market. FelixGrayGlasses.com slash Dave. FelixGrayGlasses.com slash Dave. Non-prescription and prescription available. Check them out now. FelixGrayGlasses.com slash Dave. I've said this a lot, but FelixGrayGlasses.com slash Dave. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges. FelixGrayGlasses.com slash Dave. And I cannot live without them. My eyes, I before I was wearing them, I literally could not sleep. My eyes would twitch, start wearing them, and now I can go to sleep pretty easily. Yeah, this is like an all like high noon. This is a very true ad where you yes. you really rep this product. So, go check out Felix Gray. I think those are the Carvers or the Nashes. They look like I'm on the site right now. Yeah, I know the other ones, the rounder ones, are the Robles. I'm not sure what these are. Yeah. Okay, so go grab some Felix Gray. All right, we're bringing in the Mean Girls now. Um, I thought that was a pretty interesting chat with Nate right there. I, one thing that stuck out is like 
He is right. Like, what do you? Do? I basically bounce between Twitter, Instagram, like the score, check games and stuff. Like, what do you use? Like now, like, what are to you checking read on? stuff? Yeah, I mean, of I, course, yeah, but Twitter, I, it's a different sites, world. But. Like, there's, it, it's just, it's a different world in so many different ways. Like, I, it, 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 things change. You know, to sit and write these blogs. Yes, they're funny, but. Things move so fast on the internet. It's like by the time you get it out, no one even fucking cares. It's just a different world. I do think there is a spot for it, but budgets and things like that. What do you get a banner ad on a website? I, it's just hard. Things are hard. It's a different world. Yeah. I don't know what, like, to be honest, I don't know. Because I'm pretty, I always like war shit not like like i'm fascinated by it so the stuff in ukraine like i'm trying to keep up on it i don't even know where to go i don't trust anything like i google it i go on twitter like i don't know what's real what's fake i don't know if they're telling you certain things because i like i have my impression of what's going on over there is like ukraine's putting up a very stiff fight and like sort of winning but or being but i don't know like is that real i have no idea it's very hard to get real information yeah, you got duped by that Klitschko picture, even though they are fighting, I, from I, what I, I understand. I got duped, but no, I mean, he wasn't actually fighting. It was an old picture. But yeah. I, I knew about I was just waiting for something. I, I already – he is the mayor. He's the mayor of mm -hmm. Kiev, right? So – and he's still there. So, I mean, duped, but not duped. Like, we talked about the ghost of – which Kevin's talked about, the ghost of Kiev. Like, that, if you looked one second to that, that was the most obviously fake story ever. Like, I mean, anybody who paid one ounce. And, but people are saying it could be fake. But, like, uh, they're saying he shot down six, like, Russian fighters in one day and some old ant antiquated, like, fighter jet. But then you kept reading in the official term for, like, a fighter pilot ace is somebody who shot down, like, six planes ever. Ever. And, like, so... All through World War II, if one person shot down six, you're an ace. There aren't too many of them documented, and they're saying this guy did it in five minutes. So it's like mm. that was obviously fake. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very tough. You're right, especially there to know what's going on. So, But it would be, it would be cool to – I mean, you're right. Is, is the world too far gone that, like, the, the app can't be, like, in the rotation? Or I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, right, I, right. I'll still retweet very good written blogs, and they're still very funny, and they're still doing it, but uh, it, it, there's a lot of other factors that go into where we deploy our resources and what people want to do. We're just spread out too much. You've talked about that before, too, yeah. about how you're over too many platforms where it's like, if you did one thing, it'd be huge. Yeah. I so. got to get – I see, Kim, I'm going to – something's going on. I think I got to turn down the heat in here or else I'm going to overheat. All right, let's get that heat turned on. Yeah, let's do uh, let's do bird dogs while we wait for Kim. So okay, so I, again, we're on a good roll. I used to complain with ads like they're not giving me things that fit, but there they go. Bird dogs always wearing them. I'm literally the glasses, the the Fierce grays, the bird dogs. It's like my high noon. Those are all, these. Are, this is my life. You're getting the Dave Porter lifestyle experience. Um, go to birddogs.com. Use promo code Dave. Don't have to wear underwear. They fit great. They make your legs look fucking spectacular. Go to birddogs.com. Enter promo code Dave. They'll throw in a free bird dogs beanie. I am going to Boston, so maybe I break that out. I think it's like 20 oh, degrees oh. there. Um, go to birddogs.com. Enter promo code Dave. You get the free bird dogs beanie, which looks good. That's birddogs.com. Promo code Dave. Boom. Free bird dogs beanie with your pair of bird dogs. Stay warm and comfortable this winter in your bird dogs. They also have joggers that are really cool. Beautiful. Go get some bird dogs. Great ads for you today, Dave. Um, so I, I guess, too, while we wait for Kim, we could just uh, hit on some other stuff. And then I would say the biggest news out of the company meeting was uh, it went public that our uh, CRO, Deirdre, is leaving. Yeah, so I knew that for a while. Um, not a while, but Erica was telling me about it. She's getting a CEO gig. So a lot of people are poaching our talent, and that's what happens. Uh, it's like... Not to be a broken record, but who has, like, the most coaches in the NFL? Belichick. You start being successful, people come for the talent, they give them bigger roles. That's a natural progression. And it is the business world. You know, Deirdre was here four years. That, that's 
probably a pretty long tenure in the world of the business side. I think we are unusual that we have people, well, especially in content, who are here for decades, and it's a great place to work. Um, but the business side always has a little bit of turnover and rollover and recruiters coming for your people, offering them more money, higher titles. It's natural progression. So you view it as people are just getting poached because of how well we've done, not people are kind of getting jumping ship because of getting slipped, like getting worried. No, I, yeah, I view that. I mean, every situation is different, but generally, you know, if you, it, it's like if an assistant coach goes, the uh, offensive coordinator gets a head coaching job, I don't think you look at that as slipping. I think you look at that as they got that job because they're successful in the other. I mean, Deirdre is going from CRO to CEO. That mm -hmm. is a big change. Jen left. She's moving to the West Coast. So, I mean, there's things that happen like that that that's just the natural progression of business. And, uh, do you think the business side still sturdy or you're still happy with it from what you see? Yeah, I, I love the change. Like, I think we've said this, Hank and MB, MB on the business side, Hank on the content side have been both promoted and are going to work together to try to create stuff that advertisers like. And to be honest, I love. there's not too many, and I don't know them all now, but there's not too many like sales people that I know well and I'd be like, I can say anything to her or him and they get us totally. I love MB. I've never just said recording stopped in my ears. Uh oh. Me too. So like I as I say, the MB like I love MB in this role. MB is somebody like that just gets us, works hard. Anything she's involved in, I feel like is buttoned up top to bottom. And if it's not, she like knows it and will take responsibility. So I love the combo of her and Hank. Uh, I wish Deirdre well. Um, Erica did a great job of hiring. Like I, it, well, Gia is great. Jen was great. So we'll see who they replace, but she's done pretty good. But that's the nature. Remember who's the guy who jumped to overtime? Um, <clears throat> uh like he was good, but he, you know, that's the nature of it. He was here for 10 minutes. He liked it, I think. And then bang, he went somewhere else. That is, that is the nature. It's a jump ship nature over there. Four years is a long run. Um, where do you go from CRO up CEO, our CEO, like we were just saying, she's not going anywhere. I will say funny story. I went out this weekend. I don't go out much anymore. I go out maybe once every few weeks, once a month, honestly, but, um, Sylvana's friends were in town. We went out and a, a girl tells she's like, hey, Dave, like, I'm Sammy Sweetheart. I'm like, oh, Sammy Sweetheart. And I was thinking, Jay, wow. She's like, I know one of your employees. I'm like, they, she's got to be talking about the out and about guys because that just happened. And I confused Jay, wow, Sammy, Sammy Sweetheart for a second. It was not. Obviously, Sammy Sweetheart with a boyfriend. They're like, you got to stop giving Sausage such a problem. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, we grew up with Sausage. I'm like, well, he, he, he deserves everything he gets. <laughs> well, that's out of left field yeah it was <laughs> i met him for the first time in la and i was like it, it was like an honor to be yeah first was time he was he stuffing shrimp down his face <laughs> no he wasn't but he's like what's up i'm like oh what's up i thought he was a stoolie he's like, I'm like i could he's see like, him leaving i think he's age? a deirdre disciple yeah. so i could see him following i hope he doesn't i think people like it, but i could see it Ah, nice words for sausage today and Nate. This is uh, I don't know about nice, but a nice uh, Monday for you, Dave. So uh, yeah, I think M is going to be great for the record too, as well. That's I mean everyone likes her here. So uh, and uh, good luck to Deirdre. Thank you for all you've done. Um, all right, it sounds like we have content, Kim. Now, yes, can I you hear me? Her. Yeah, all right. Now, okay, now, hello. Yes. Hi, Kim. Um, <laughs> So Dave hasn't been totally following what's been going on. No, I, I, I know the Mean Girls. The origin of it was when Alex was being a mean girl and not admitting it. And then, like, she was so annoying on Twitter. I just kind of, like, zoned it out because she was just, like, everything. She was in the comments. So I, And I know she has a podcast with Jordan, the Mean Girls, which she asked me about, by the way. And it's the same um, thing that I've said 
prior on this. She's like, hey, me and Jordan want to do this Mean Girls pod. What do you think? It's like, why are you asking me? If you want to do it, do it. And if it catches on and people like it, you can put resources. I have seen Kim lately being like, well, Alex has now left me in the dust. She's doing everything with Jordan. She came with me to do um, the podcast because I said to the mother-daughter, which caught my attention, is, and it is why we hired them. I thought it was very unique. Um, I thought... Alex was telling you what to tweet, Kim. I will say that. I thought it was like a work by Alex to draw more attention. I asked Paul, I'm like, is this, is, is this like Alex tweeting for Kim, telling her what to do? Alex like, no. So I, I don't, that's as much as I know. There seems to be some animosity here. From me, a little animosity? Yes. Towards Alex? Yes, just a little bit. Now, so is this real? Well, the tweeting part, yeah, this is real. Now, sometimes I'm not quite sure what I'm saying. I kind of hear things what my kids say, and I just sort of tweet it. But, yeah, I'm tweeting. I'm, I'm, I've got a brain. I can tweet. But I've just but learned how to tweet. <laughs> you don't seem so, like somebody from what I know, and I don't know you overly well, who is like, yep, I want to stir the pot and have all this chaos. It seems very Alex to me that she would want this type of stuff. So she's – are you per, like, are you two fighting for real? Well, I'm well fighting or this is how we fight. Like I tell her what I'm upset about and then I just keep grinding on it. So, yeah, I'm a little upset with her that she kind of brought I moved to New York City to do this podcast with her. And now she sort of just dumped me to go do this mean girl pod, which I don't really get anyway. So, yeah, I'm a little mad with her a little. A so little it's teeny. all you like. Yeah. Is there there's is there. I guess legitimate tension because it's some of the things I've seen it. it, it is it playful? I guess is that my is there is like are you and Alex still totally fine as playful banter? Are you saying, hey, I may tweet this? Does she see it before? The only thing she sees before is I ask I, I when I about the one of the tweets I ask and she kind of made a face, so I, I assumed that meant yes. But no, I'm doing the tweeting, and um, yes, this is not a it's a playful banter, but that's how we argue. So I'm. I am legitimately peeved with her because she sort of just left me dangling. Like, I think I'm on the back burner, and that's not very fair, do you think? No, I mean, I, I guess to a degree, I people, obviously it's a mother-daughter thing, but mm -hmm. her, I could see her being like, well, I'm going to go try to create content where I think there's more the most buzz and I can make the biggest splash. But I could see you being upset. I guess, would you tweet something that you knew really angered her? What? No, I wouldn't tweet something that I knew really angered her. So that is the difference in my mind between a real fight. Because when it's real, people go for the throat and truly try to like, like Nate always is using him. He's always in wars where people are trying to like anger him or him vice versa. But this is still so that it's not as hot as maybe perceived then. Maybe, but that's probably how mothers and daughters argue. So like. We just put it all out there. Or that's how my family does it. If you, I'm going to say it. She's going to say it. If you don't like it, tough. This is how I feel. So you can deal with it. And you can say back to me how you feel. And that's just how it goes. Got um, it. Yeah. Alex is pretty tough. No, I know that she yeah. is. That's why I <laughs> think she's kind of like I perceive it as her being the ringleader in this. What did you, I saw one thing you said when I was trashing her that well, I think you were like, nobody likes to hear that about their daughter. No, nobody likes to hear that. Now, okay, so now what I'm saying is is true, and I'm not really trashing her. I'm just saying, hey, this is what you're doing. Like, I don't like her hanging out with Jordan because Jordan said, I don't want to have kids. And I'm like, I don't need that influence around my daughter when really I want to have grandkids, right? So, see, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to get grandkids and what they're going to call me. So this, this sort of banter about that being around mean girl Jordan that kind of thing bothers me a little bit but I'm not saying anything mean about anybody like like I didn't call anyone um an asshole or a scumbag without knowing for sure that's what they were right well she was if you're referring to what I said she, that, <laughs> yeah, that's I you, that's almost universal from every person with like a brain that Alex is that in that case she was yeah oh, I don't going know. back when she was harassing that girl I don't yes, think she was harassing her, but we'll go on from there. Well, <laughs> she one hundred percent was not harassing her. Well, I mean, now, you just learned what Twitter was like 
last <laughs> week. I, I, it, that, that on social media is mean. That, that was the point. But. Okay. I did have that happen to someone once, and I don't think it was mean. I think it was just, don't you have a filter on there that just automatically bumps you off when you say the word Photoshop? You, you, I think you can pick words if you want yeah. that erase it. I think. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Kim, so you, huh? so you don't like Alex hanging around Jordan, huh? Well, I just think Alex needs to hang around with people who want grandkids or want kids, right? <laughs> I mean, I, that's a very, like, I guess, mother or older, like, I don't have kids. But that, I don't think you can, like, I don't think that's going to affect whether she has kids. Maybe. I don't know. I, that, that, you want to talk about me outside of your depth? I, that's outside of my depth. Like, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, she, yeah, yeah. She told me not to tweet. As she, okay, so this started at the very beginning. Both my kids said, don't write Dave an email saying thank you for the job. So I didn't. Anyway, thank you for the job. So I wanted to say that. Then the second thing was, don't tweet. You've got way too much on your plate. You will not be able to figure it out. The, yeah, and oh, you cannot blog either. Don't don't even step into that. If they want you to blog, they'll ask you to blog. Well, I finally got asked to be to blog on Twitter, so I was happy about that. Well, yeah, and none of that's true. I mean, Alex was obviously <laughs> the driver in you two being hired. Like she was the one who was asking for the job, sending the stuff, and then you came with it. You were a part of it, but Alex is always in our eyes or my eyes been the one who is more motivated about it but you're more than welcome to do anything like that's not true what she's saying like you have as you can do anything you want here just like she can okay yes i yes i would be able to do anything i wanted so now i know i can right a hundred percent okay and that's our kim, fault if we didn't make that clear kim I, I did see too you were asking uh people were tweeting at you the word would yes uh did you did you ever find out what that meant uh would like i would i could i would or would like uh a soap <laughs> that yeah that <laughs> dave don't look like that i'm not sure there's something they're talking i, I oh, don't okay. know what we're talking about uh, you've never what? heard that dave, eddie or and someone... paul are laughing like there's uh, you, is it like a sexual joke is that what you're doing eddie well it's i'm it's not what i'm doing that's just in fact what it is if oh. you, like okay so i thought it was more like um Wood grooming the product. Get yeah, wood. Or, com. or oh, you would? Could you would? Eddie, oh, why yeah. you? Why, oh, why being, wouldn't and, you? Why wouldn't Eddie, you? Eddie, Eddie, Eddie and Paul, instead of you two, laugh, like what, explain <laughs> what you're talking about here. Well, it's just so if someone says wood, that means they 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 would they think that they would uh they would like to hop in the bedroom with you, Kim. You know, they would like to get down. Oh, is that why the 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 products are called wood? Correct. Yes. So you wore it on, and people would say "wood" to you. Okay. You did not know that. Yeah. I wonder what well, I. Okay. Yeah. Now I know. A little romp in the hay. Uh, That's not. All nice. right. We want to bring in the girls. Well, we that is actually weirdly like a compliment, I guess. But yeah, of course. Is that kind of like how many people you've killed, or <laughs> bagged, or whatever? <laughs> no, I think they're just saying they find you attractive. If I'm understanding yeah. the discourse here. Okay. Correct. You know the term, Dave. Don't act like you don't know. No, I, I, I did not know people were tweeting her that as a joke. Yeah, but you've heard people, you've heard people say I would, wood yeah, before. yeah, I would. Yeah. I didn't know that's why that product was called wood. Dave, do, yes. you, do you tell your mother you love her and, and good morning often? Not as much as probably she'd like. Maybe If we're being do. honest. Yes, that would be so nice. <laughs> Duly <Hello>. noted. <laughs> Kim, do you have a crush on Dana Beers as well? Is he? He is the nicest guy, is he not? And he's so. No, cute. he's not. Ask Marina about that. <laughs> oh. Well, he he Marina, who is one of his best friends, supposedly at the office. He skipped her wedding, so. He skipped her wedding. Yeah. Like he went and then left, or he never. No, went? he he made up a imaginary excuse on why he couldn't go. Oh no. And they're it's like. Easy to, Best friends? Actually, they were one. Uh, well, she came on this podcast and cried about it, so they oh. were pretty close. So again, actions louder than words a lot of times. <laughs> That's right. That's why we want grandkids. 
No, I'm mad at you. You're going to body us on Twitter over the weekend and then go in here and go soft? That was <laughs> pathetic. We watched the whole thing from the control room. What is going on with this camera? It's on their feet. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean I went soft? I was not being soft. You were so soft. You were like saving face, but on Twitter you're like letting it rip. That's called keyboard courage. If you're going to, you have to oh. say it in here too. <laughs> you ruined my life on Friday and now you're being they nice didn't to me. They didn't ask me anything like, not, about that. It's not that bad. Dave's like, would you actually tweet something? No. Yeah. Mom. Our, our producer quit because of her. Yeah. Like if you're going to go in here and be like, no, everything's fine. <laughs> So, no, no, yeah, it's not. Well, now I'm confused okay, because okay. she she pretty clearly said like she would never tweet anything that actually she thought would upset your feelings or anything like yeah. that. Oh, no, it didn't upset Alex's feelings. It was my feelings. And our producer I, quit because of that. OK, no, 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 no. That's what I heard. That's why I tweeted that. And that was not a lie. OK, so first it of was all, a lie. Alex, I'm just going to say this. She's not a mean girl. I don't know about you, George. Oh, my God. Let, it, let, let that rest. <laughs> no, she's going to tell it like it is, be 100% honest, which is what I'm doing. That's what I heard. I mean, that's they fair. woke me up at 1.30 in the morning after I'd bought them a drink, and then I'm sound asleep. They wake me up, and I'm, and I'm like, now I can't go back to sleep. So I'm walking back and forth getting water, and I'm listening to them talk, and they're like – talking about Chad or some guy that I don't know. And then they're talking about how cute Rudy is and da 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 da, da. So I'm assuming Rudy's the dude that Jordan's That what? That what, Kim? Well, of course, Jordan made out with Rudy. We all saw that. We saw no, that? No, but we, I did it, and that's now that's why true. he quit the podcast. <laughs> but he Wait, you did or you didn't? I did not make out with him, but everyone assumes because of Kim, and that's why Rudy is no longer our producer. Well, then, but off. I saw one exchange with, like, I thought I saw when Rudy did that Clinton, like, I did not have sex with this girl, and you replied under, I never said we had sex. Yeah, because I never said we had sex. Yeah, but, but I assumed when Rudy but, said that but that, hold he, on, hold that on. he kissed her. Hold on. Why would you not? I kn exactly, Kim. Please. Rudy, did you make out with her? No, oh. I did not. I don't know how that's still getting confused. I, I mean, they handcuffed me. They like no one's going to believe that I didn't make out with Jordan just because they threw that out there. And no matter what I say, people are going to be like, oh, well, he's just going to deny it. So correct. I, I think you made out with her. And I'll tell you exactly why, Rudy, <laughs> because your Clinton video that you put out, her response below it was I never said we had sex. I know. So, yeah, she perpetuated that rumor by saying that. But you, you your statement was bad. You did a Clinton statement. Yeah, Cl that's like saying I'm guilty. No, yeah. it's not. Yes, because he was guilty. Okay, that's different. I said it because of what was said in the video. He says, I never had sexual relations with that woman, and that is what happened. Yeah, but Clinton lied. Uh, <laughs> that is a fact. That's like verbatim what he said. You're talking yeah. about what happened to Bill Clinton. I just tweeted it because it's... So, so, so it's a fire video. That's why I had to tweet. I was like, this is funny. Like, no, I have to. Actually, it, I, it was so very you, funny. It was yeah. funny, but you were actually saying, yes, I kissed her. No. Correct. It, what, at, 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 yeah. Correct. At what part, what part of that? And then she okay. confirmed That's how I took it. I mean, who cares? Was like, but <laughs> that's the only thing, Rudy. I don't know why you'd care, but. Yeah, Thank that's you. my thing. I'm like, yeah. I thought we were well, just. I think you can't just I'll make up that kind of rumor about I a I will answer that question because who knows who Rudy's talking to in his private life that may care. Yes. Right. And we have we now have figured that out. We heard on Thursday that oh, Rudy oh, downloaded <laughs> was downloading Raya, the dating app. So I was like, oh, it's cool. I've it's had Raya cool. downloaded for three years. They won't let me in. That's a red herring. Like that has nothing to do with it. But, but let's say this. Rudy makes out with Jordan. Jordan, Kim, they both confirm it. Rudy's talking to a girl like, what's this? They're still like, hey, we got to say this didn't happen. You go to your death. It happened. It, it, you it did not happen. The way it didn't yeah. happen. I oh. did not did make not out. Happen. I never girl, kissed Girl Rudy. Rudy's talking to it didn't happen. All right, fine. So, who, so who'd and you make out with then? Well, we can't tell you because that's part of the podcast. I got so railroaded here. It's crazy. Um, if that I was not our finest segment, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say so either. But if I just set that up like they did, they just said nailed it. And they would have died there. You wait for them to throw some more fucking some coal on the fire and you hope it keeps burning. It wasn't burning, so we, we that's what we got. Uh, let's talk about Roman, and then let's get uh, Big Cat and uh, Rico in here. Now that I'm interested here. Uh, Roman swipes. Get Roman.com slash Dave, the hard dick business. Get your first month swipes for just five bucks when you choose a monthly plan. Most guys have tried different ways to last longer in bed. But thinking about baseball doesn't always work. Folks at Roman Online Men's Health Company are changing the game with Roman Swipes, the secret to longer-lasting sex. You know who loves this? Uh, Wallow and Gilly. Fucking love it. 
Love it. Uh, like, we're off camera, and they won't shut up about how great Roman swipes are. Um, they are the secret to last longer lasting sex. Go to GetRoman.com slash Dave to get your first month's swipes for just 5 bucks when you choose a monthly plan. That's GetRoman.com slash Dave. They ship in super discreet, easy-to-use packages. The pack you can hide in your wallet so they're there whenever you need it. Just take them out, swipe it in your dick, bang, hard, ready to go. That's it. Get there you Roman. go. Dot com slash Dave. Hard dick business. Okay, so is uh, Kareem, is Big Cat and Rico there? Okay, so we're grabbing them. We'll get to some more stuff while we wait. Um, Storm Chasers got uh, got the boot from Arkansas, which also kind of coincides with Big Cat and uh, Rico. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Storm Chamber is great. Um, it's crazy they got one right off the bat, like all the teams lost. I was laughing out loud, like Caleb doing the worm and Roan dancing. I don't know why Arkansas didn't let him in, but I love that concept. That concept came from, that's a Dave Portnoy brain production, Storm Chasers. What's their record? It's got to be like yeah, crazy. They, it, yeah, it seems really good. I mean, when you originally came up with it, we're like, they'll just go till they find one. And then they get them quick. But still, yeah, so funny. Gets the crowds. I don't know what. It's so crazy to me. Like, why would schools not want them? It's great. They don't, like, cause problems. It's a storm the court. The students love it. It's just shit like that. Like, why would Arkansas, those cops, be such pricks? And, like, Muss has such a great relationship with PMT and bench mobs. So strange. It's like what, it was very strange. Um, Coach Prime was also on Jimmy Fallon. I saw that with the Dana Beer shout out. What a world. Yeah. Um, so that was nice. Go check out the doc. Airs Tuesday and Dave, Thursdays, we got a nap I problem. I think episode. We got a nap problem. Oh, we do? Yeah. He needs a nap very badly. It's a problem. He's coming in. He's taking a piss. He's very upset at me. He's upset at you. He's upset at me. I, I don't know what to say. Is he mad at Billy football too? He's mad at Billy football. He we got we had a storm out today. We had another storm out that uh, was very. I, I'm gonna say this, and, and he'll be in here in a second, I think, unless he just unless he just fucking rope a dope memes like I gotta take a piss and then just left, which he is in that type of state right now. The Rico, other option is to have, you know, you have these self driving cars now, where we always have a car parked right out front of the office with the directions to a therapist. Yes, so he, yes. he just get in, strap in like this, and it just takes him directly to the therapist. <laughs> I'm going to give Rico credit, though. In the past, what happened this morning would have ended up with a high noon thrown at someone's face. He walked in. He looked me dead in the eye like, you know, when he gets like that, like, and he oh, was yeah. like, whose desk is this? Mine or his? I'm explaining right now. Here he is. And I go, it's Billy's desk. And then he goes, can't work here. And just turned around and walked out. <laughs> so what I said, I keep giggling, guys. What I said was, <laughs> how's that you free ride, nap? buddy? How's that free ride? Do you what need I a nap? said, biggest insecurity in the company. Rico, what do I, you need a nap? No, what I said, I'm not losing. I'm in a position now where I'm being baited. That's not nope. baited, though. So it was my, it my, was my desk, no, which, which it was Gaz has, desk. which You're he be gave because he meffed. left. Okay, so now what I said was, if I don't have a place to sit, I don't have a place to work. And I said, in which I replied. So let's I let's handle that. One, where, one, one, why, he can one sit I'm next being to me. baited. I'm definitely being baited. No, you're where not. no, you're not. If I flip out, I'm weak, and then it's, that's no. what it is. I can't flip out anymore. So he's well, sitting no, there no, no, no. hoping can, for a reaction. He's definitely you, sitting there hoping for a reaction. I'm not you giving can't, a reaction. You can, you can flip out. You just can't get physical. Fair. Right. Where, and also, so I where am I credit. sitting? Where I, am I sitting? Okay, so I told the Rico. Who are you talking to? He, he, Every, you, Dave, everyone. as well. And so I don't really know what happened. He, all right, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Gaz, Rico took Gaz's desk. Didn't ask Gaz. Took Gaz's desk. Then just claimed it was his. Rico got suspended. He was gone for a month. Billy then took Rico's desk. Kind of like a, whoever's squatting last gets it. Then Rico well, came back. I'm on Rico's side. Billy, we know, doesn't like Rico. So he is like, Rico, Billy has a desk. No, nope. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't have a desk. He's in the same spot that Rico is in. So it's basically Rico took Gaz's guest without a desk without asking. Billy took Rico's desk without asking. Until Billy gets suspended, I think it's his desk. And if Billy gets suspended, then Rico can take it back. I also told Rico he can sit next to me. 
That's, Hank that's is going a negative, upstairs. That's a negative he spot can sit for me. Next to me. That's a negative spot for me. I cannot sit there. <laughs> I also told him Wait, there's a thousand there. new desks next upstairs. to Dan. I can't sit there because why? It's just neg. It's a he's, a, he's, a, he's the number one rider. Well, I'm, I need to be wooed back, Dave. I'm not a rider right now. Oh, I didn't know that. So where yeah. am I sitting? Hold on. All right, let me figure. But you were in the office last week, no? No. Well, yeah, but again, I'm I don't do the confrontations, and I was traveling. We did two. Really good live show, so we were moving around a lot. So I let it go. I figured it would s- settle itself out. So you tried to have a re- peace thing with PFT. I said, "Hey, you know, like let's really not have the confrontation. He's, I know he's going to do the thing where he baits me. Just try to figure it out." And Dan's so capos had, you, are you, still acting out of line. Everyone's just sitting wherever wait, they want. What? what? He he's not. Billy's not a capo. He's a fucking street. Wait, slave. did you Got just it. say he's one of my? Ca- wait, what? No, nope. no, you're Dan's one of my guys. Capo. Still oh, acting out wait, of order. So it is what did it is. You now you have to make a ruling. Did you? Well, I'm getting to it. Yeah, did I had you a f- reestablish did you reest- what? Did you reestablish position at that desk? No. Last night, I moved the stuff. No. I was sitting there. No, re- D- Billy was here last night. I saw Billy sitting in it last night. After he moved the stuff, we recorded at two o'clock. When did three. Billy first sit in that desk? Like when day he- one, as a show, yeah. as a show, as a show, as a bit, as a show. But did no, a big when? whole thing. When? When I got suspended. So he's been there for a month. Yeah. yeah. His desk. Yeah. And it's so, Rico. If Rico, right, so had, if it was at. always Rico's right. desk, it would be different. Rico took Gaz's desk right. without asking Fine. anyone. No sweat. So that's what we'll it, get you. Well, some some would say like part of the orientation process is you get the handbook and then they say, hey, here's where you're going to sit. But, but if I'm where I was going to sit. But if All I'm right. understanding it, that Billy football never had a desk either. Correct. Yes, All he right. did. So, he had part no, of a desk it. with Jake. He did Jake. not have a desk. He has part a of a fucking, Jake with Jake. A foldable table, which is not a desk. Okay. That's not a desk. That's Rico, desk. You, you deserve a desk. Right. I'll get you a desk. No, so Dave, here's what I think, Dave. I've Honestly, a a, Dave, a door does me wonders. Oh, here we go. I, I'm going to like, same rationale. I'm going to you sit in your office? office. I'm sitting in your office, yes. It's, it's going to be Skip very chair. healthy for me to shut the door. What about when you, do you jerk off to relieve stress, right? That's false. Sorry, I was thinking of a different guy. I don't think I can just give you my office. He's gonna that will go to his head so fast, Dave. No, it won't. <laughs> but you do need if he was a writer, he would a desk. Yeah, but if 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 nobody was sitting there for a month, it was never really your spot. Gaz left. It's Billy never had a spot. I can see you're gone for a month. Somebody goes into your spot. Yeah, I, it's stolen land to begin with. But you need a place to sit, so we got to get on that. He can sit next to me. Hank is moving negative. upstairs. That's a negative spot. He's allowed to sit next to me. He'd be in between me and Marty. He'd be in the power aisle with with me, Marty. Hank Rome. is really going upstairs. He said he might because he needs to. He needs to. You know, there's a lot of hubbub going around us. So I offered Rico to sit next to me. I said I could watch him. I could watch over him. Okay. I, you know, that's a. I'm not even a rider, and that's a rider move. Well, well, well. Listen, I don't. I'm. I am a rider. So I'm if not. Hank goes upstairs. Billy goes there. I don't want Billy re- sitting next to me. Well, you want him sitting no, at my you. desk. Well, that's no. I want him sitting Gaz's desk. Make the call, Skip. We're in, we're All in right. a pickle. We're in a pickle here, Skip. Yeah, I'm gonna figure it out. Okay. Why don't I, you can we talk this? about the vicious uh, tweet for the for Dave for the record? Because it's a negative environment. I'm leaving after the show because I don't have a place to sit. So that's like just un- and then tomorrow until like until you figure it out, that's when I'm reporting back to work. I'm just letting you know. What, what, about, what about just taking a nap and coming back? Where do I go? I'm a fucking nomad. OK, I'm I'm just walk in the office. You, here's what you can do like, until I'm not going to say it. In, until I figure this out. You can squat my office till I figure it out. Thank you. That's huge. That's huge. What's wrong with that? Based off what Dan's saying with squatters' rights, <laughs> once a minute. So fine. This okay, guy, thank you. Thanks, Dave. No more. Always number one rider. It's unbelievable. Did you get? Just, you know, Dave did just you get, took your office. Did you get my Paul Simon text? No. Oh yeah, I didn't like it. Oh, okay. I didn't like it. Yeah, it's it's a little upbeat. He's also. Uh, I like upbeat. I just didn't like it. You don't. It's like Paul's. It's like taking Picasso and throwing like paint on it. Rico's I don't a- like all of them. I like the Crazy Love remix. I do like that. Rico's also upset, Dave, because he says that we're uh, 3.3 million people that we just try to turn against him. He says we're negative towards him. What are you talking about? I don't know. 
He he thinks that like he so the Greg Gard thing I I stand well, by let's it. Get your I take. think it was one of the most cringeworthy back and right. forths I've seen got it. online. And now every egg looking for a resume. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Go ahead. Got it. Am what I supposed you? to say that got it wasn't? Like what What's am I supposed to be like good one liner Rico when it. Greg Gard tries to say hello to you? God, I'm more concerned with the number one rider. Dave, what is your take on it? I mean you already eviscerated us once, so just double down. What is your take? Go ahead. I didn't love it. Okay. Let me it's just it. for the just for the record. See now he's gonna play for this, the record. He's gonna play for saying the record. he's gotta be edgy. And As, I Dave, this, this is just, no problem. You asked for edgy Rico, and that's the edgiest he got. got. Yeah, I'm I know, worried. I know, I know, I know. That was I, edgy I, Rico. I know, yeah. You, you, he doesn't I didn't say anything say. about it, Rico. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I think he's afraid. He's, he wants to be friends with everybody. So I don't know. I I don't remember them making news that much. I feel like they need more edge. I could be wrong. So the tea time joke was edge. Let's play it again for the people who didn't hear first. No, we heard One it. One more time. One more time. He's afraid. He's, he wants to be friends with everybody. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I don't remember them making news that much. I feel like they need more edge. I could be wrong. Just a little side note as well. This is the second time we were mentioned in the New York Post. I love that guy. Which is Zach interesting. Brazil. Yeah, which is interesting. He's a that good guy. Zach, Zach, and you do that too. Like, you just you pick the 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 people we hate, like, to double down as well. Like, you just did. You that. just fucking right. shit on my so coach. Am I not allowed to go back at you? Here's where. Here's what where. The fuck? Here's where I'm at. I'm a, definitely a hitter, right? But the first base coach, Dave, is saying, "Round it up, be edgy, run, make make waves." And I got the third base coach going like this. Well, so no. Here first I, base coach. When, when is the first going base like coach? This? Am I going uh, first or back? What are we you doing? may need a nap. You may need a nap. A first I'm base coach. I'm giving, I'm giving <laughs> rational. I speak loud. A first base you coach know, rarely. I do a first, the ball is in front of you, Rico. One second, on uh, at one first. Second. When is the first base coach telling you to go? Never. Never. Ball's in, in front bowl, of you. On a bowl in the gap. Yeah, you, you see it. You're, you're the okay. runner. Got it. Okay. All right. So maybe a basketball equation is better. I got the head coach saying, "Hey, be more aggressive. Look to shoot the ball." And then the associate head coach is saying, "I'm going to need you to distribute. Come back a little bit." No. No, no. It, let me let me tell you this. I'll, Let's I'll hear the say clip it. one more time. Let, let, let me let me say this, Rico. Right. After you play he, this he clip, he wants to be friends with everybody. So I don't know. I I don't remember them making news that much. I feel like they need more edge. I could be wrong. And it is difficult because every time we try to make the edge, we're going after you know you're breaking chops with the refs in Iowa. We're doing this. The Dan Dackett's one. Like you immediately. Well, Go against it. Like anytime we attack or try to do whatever, I, I because Dan Dakich may or may not have a table in the Hamptons that you need to hang out with in a couple of months. He needs a nap. Potentially. Time out, time potentially. Time out. No, no, time I can't. Out. I'm not yelling. I, I would do one on the record. I'm not yelling. I'm from Staten. I we talk loudly. If, at any point, if can anyone thinks I'm yelling, Rico? I will personally apologize. Okay. Can I just I, speak loudly, and I'm giving efficient I, points. That's what I they learned in therapy. You don't have to confuse. It's just I do need to get the point across. Go ahead, Dave. Can I? Your basketball analogy. If you get a pass and you're open and you don't look for your shot, it's like shoot the ball. Now, if you get a pass and there's two guys in your face, I don't want you to force it. That and I don't like Greg Gard. He's he he's a criminal. He in started my mind. a riot. Yeah, he started a riot. Correct. But that felt like something forced. Like it wasn't in the natural give and take. It just it it it's like, hey, how you doing? And you hit him with a canned line. A one-liner, which I didn't think really played. God. That's why I didn't think it was great. I didn't, I didn't say anything. I didn't even comment about that. But it felt forced, which I think you're better than that. What's yes. What's worse, taking a tough shot or not taking a shot at all? I you, genuinely respect but, your opinion. Wait, I don't want you to take a shot with two guys in your face. <laughs> yeah. He's saying, so, so we have that access. He comes over. We just say, hey, good to no, see you. No, I told Rico, if he had said, if Greg Gard had come over, and he, I think he said, like, hey, how about this fire that they're shooting out? And Rico had said, you're going to need a lot more firepower to make it past the first round in, in, in March. Then it makes sense. It literally made no sense. Greg Gard it came was, over and was like, hey, how about this intro? And Rico's like, tea time, second weekend, what do you think? Like, yeah, it was, it, it was it so discombobulated. Right. That it was my whole point. It feel forced. I cringe. I, ag I agree with what you're saying. Listen. You can't be friends with everybody. He's on an anti-Wisconsin, but it just, I'm being dead honest. It felt forced. I didn't criticize that. I, you, you took a shot with two guys in your face, and you, you, it turned into a fast break, easy deuce the other way.
Okay. That's, Were you that's, looking to trigger him, Dave, with the side-by-side photo, though? Be honest. Or the Storm Chasers and the Bench Mob video? That's the next one. We got a whole list of things. Next point, I, I want to become a rider again, by the way. I would love for Rico to just find his way to apologize to me once. <laughs> this the wrong way. It's good for everybody. I am not re- rooting against this podcast. I th- <laughs> Foul. <laughs> lying. That's when you do lying. that. You want to hear it again? It's good for everybody. I am not re- rooting against this podcast. Why would I root against this podcast? Foul. Why would I root against this podcast? When you argue fouls, you get teched. I'm going to give you another opportunity. You genuinely believe that when you do that. What? Ex- well, let me ask you more this way, right? So we don't, I mean, what, what else can we be doing? Like, we've been now to three live shows with good turnouts. We're right there in the mix with the game. We're there at the play. Like, what exactly? Got to get Why creative. the need? You gotta, you and you, gotta, we had the meeting last week where people are like, you're, you know, asking for a promotion. What about just not doing demotion? What about just maybe letting mm. someone walk across the street without violently attacking their face? And we there know where no we're at. Such, it's a seasonal no podcast. Thing. A no very accurate thing. description there's is no us such thing in my world like as demotion. Listen to what he's saying. Go ahead. Listen there, to what there, he's saying. There's no such thing in my world as demotion. If people's talking about yeah, that's pro motion. That's I I tried okay. to say it to him, Dave, when they were like when when Rico was getting mad at me that I went that I went after him and, and said it was cringeworthy and that he's a scumbag after the Greg Gard clip, and then they're also in the same turn being like, look how many views it has. Well. I'm interacting with it. It's a good thing. Correct. And I just want it on the record here. Three quarters of a million. I want it on the record here for a second. Yeah. Three quarters of a million. Do you – if I don't say anything about that clip, do you – like, I, I, want, I interact – It would have done okay. It would have done okay as well. You're right. right. You gave it to a new stratosphere. All right. But Rico. that doesn't – you don't mean to get – you don't get to hold that over my head. No, Obviously, but, Rico. No, I'm not holding it over your head, Rico. But what you're asking for – here's what I don't understand. I'm going to play – I'm going to do plain and simple. Uh, when Rico was out, I went on bench mob. I filled in. I love talking college basketball, so it was no problem. Every time they do a live show and they ask me for a video, I have a video for them. I am supportive as supportive can be for bench mob. I tweet it. I retweet it. When Rico has the most cringeworthy thing I've ever seen against my coach, I have to respond. I can't be like, oh, yeah, good I did job, have Rico. to respond to Ugh. that. And as the director of content, did you see what your video looked like in front of the subway mics? Jersey mics. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, we had some issues with social. Did you think it looked good? Did you think it was a good representation? To be of honest with you, I didn't see. I'll be honest, I didn't see the video right away. So when you see that, it looks like four sad sacks. Got it. Right. And but of the whole night, of the whole the rain, night, you're replaying there, on the do jumbotron you think that one turnover. Good? You're replaying one turnover and saying, "Hey, they had a horrible night. Like nothing." Nothing Wait. about the crowd at the, at the bar. Nothing about the game. Nothing about the referee coming over and saying, hey, you guys are from Barstool, right? Like, nothing about that. No clips, no student section, nothing. But what so is just, that? Like, like here's – and I don't have the answer, but it – what – all right. I'm going to say two things. Bench Mob, I don't know if you've heard the content. I'm going to have to fight to keep that alive if we want to keep it. I know you want, like, this runway – but it it's really small, not growing. I would say we're in the mix. I mean, it's last year was a COVID year. Though? You couldn't go to games. But so just like, not even going to the games. I'm talking about the actual podcast. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a niche podcast. Like I don't know which way but, you're but going. But like that. I, I, I'm I'm thinking like sitting so like, down. All right, so get, coming so up g- with like segments that are are very unique and haven't been done by other people and a, attract like get people talking and shit like that. Is, is it there? I have the answer. I don't I don't know what you're looking with as far as seg. Uh, yeah, I guess, I don't know. I mean, it's still it's still a year too. Like yeah, I guess I don't know. Guys, the question I have to you, and you obviously head of social, it's definitely but a niche. I, it's like def- Dan's da- one of the best in the business at this part of it of coming right. up with like, I know the whether answer. it be like the wheel on the yeah, yeah. something that like everyone's. Like, so what's the answer? Well, the answer is, and Rico's not gonna like to hear it. I've told him this a million times. He's gonna be upset at me, and I, I, I want to be a writer again. I want to hopefully figure that out maybe at the end of this this uh, show. But there, there's like a sense when I when on Bench Mob of 
trying to be a little bit too traditional, like X's and O's sports. And that's hard because that's not what we do. So like back and forth and jokes is what we do. So that's where they got to figure out where they want to be. Like, I know Rico wants to be respected. I do respect him, but it's like not relying on like talking just analytics and Ken Palm and all this stuff and actually like finding a way to talk about it in a unique way. That's the, that's the magic recipe in my mind. And he doesn't, I've told him this a million times. Hey, to be fair to them though, it, it, whether you like, but that's all you like what this comes now, 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 Three no, points. No, no, however Rico, many people I'm watch this, advice. we'll be if tweeting. You, you at, should be canceled. You the, You're pieces no, of but shit. If you look at like the when yak, you brought me you in, the, did you or did you not say, hey, do whatever you want? Like, what's your passion? But like, now I'm right, giving so you an idea. We're, but like, we're working you look on at it. the yak. They have the wheel. PMT. They came. They they come out with like the fastest two minutes and like things like that. Dog walk with Eddie. There's different things where you think of them. And it's like bang. That's like something that you tune in regularly. It could be that I don't know what. The, Dan's right. We're never going to be like a talking head type college basketball podcast. Right. I think if you watch the interviews, we're not asking, hey, what do you think about like your dribble drive offense? No, the interviews We're trying are to get the stuff off the grid, like asking. Okay, here, here's – all right, you're, listen. I'm actually trying to be honest with you and not like trolling you. The interviews are good. Interviews and podcasts are to get new audiences. Who you are and how you interact with your co-hosts is how to keep the audience. That's the difference. An interview to me is always like a gateway of like, okay, here's this person, and they will hopefully draw in, you know, a couple hundred new people who want to listen to this interview. And then when they listen, they're like, oh, these guys are fucking cool. I want to listen to them. I want to hang out with them. That's the that's the meat and bone, like potatoes of your show. The interviews are just are just a gateway drug. That's it. So that's that's how you got to think about it. it. It's less about the the interviews are important but they're not they're not why people stay is my point do you think they're hitting their stride now though dan i mean what the last 10 days haven't you guys got uh facetime with guard fran and huggins like yeah no i I, listen i think they're doing a good job of getting out there and making buzz i don't know what the numbers are i am supportive of bench mob i don't know how you could argue that i'm not supportive of bench mob rico's beef with me is he thinks that when he does something really embarrassing with greg guard I should just sit there and be like, oh, it's fine. I'm going to respond. I have to respond. That's my team. If it was another coach, I probably wouldn't have said anything. I have to respond. I got tagged in that tweet constantly on Saturday. Like, what am I going to do? Just sit there on my hands? So he doesn't understand that part. I'm not going to say, good job, Rico. That was a great one-liner. It made me cringe. I'd also say this, Eddie. We're at a spot as a company where, like, Getting FaceTime with people isn't like we have celebrities on stuff all across Barstool. So like just being talking small talk with like a coach is it it still has to be like interesting. Mm -hmm. That's fair. And and their interviews are are good. I've listened to their interviews. I mean, I, I, I couldn't be more supportive of Benchmark. Jake is my guy. I love Jake. Like I they just need to figure out a way to 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 lighten up a little bit, I think is really what it yeah. comes down to. Or find the things that make, and, and I, again, I don't mean this if I'm missing it, the things that make college basketball, college basketball are unique. Like that is what Storm Chasers captures. Correct. Like that, it, 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 that's why it draws you in. It, it's just something different, but very like at storming the court. It's just... I, and I don't know what it is. It, I, I honestly don't. I don't it, know if it's camping out at Chichester, the little something that is I haven't gotten as very different yet. It, it, and, the, and we just finished a, ta- a taping where I was, I was giving Rico shit about, like, he, he, he obviously you like Ken Palm. I, I, I like the analytics side of it. But there's a, a feeling like if – the team can't win it all, like, write them off. Like, we were having a debate about Wisconsin. Like, Wisconsin's not going to win it all. But they've had an incredible season. I've enjoyed it so, so much. Like, you can sit there. If you're a college sports fan, the difference between pro and college is pro sports, you got to win a title, right? You have to because that's what you're doing it for. In college, there are, like, 90% of programs, both college, football, and basketball, will never win a title. So you have to have something else. Like, you have to have something to root for. And having a good season is – it sounds like loser talk, but it's not in college basketball. So, I think, like, embracing that. Like, Providence is one of the best stories this year. 
How do you get that a little bit more? I don't know. I don't know the answer. And, and also, I would say, and Gaz is going to come in, and I think this isn't just a bench mob, but I think we've seen enough of the numbers that if something doesn't change, it's not going to get where it needs to be. Which season is it on? So this is the second season? Two. Two. Okay. But then what I, Gaz, I guess, you got yeah, I mean, I guess that's a business thing. I don't fully understand it, but like – if they're selling live shows and then they're selling the new show with the thing we got going now, and the like, I don't because we've said the bar, this a lot. I, we've said this a lot with a lot of the major advertisers, like High Noon being one of them. They give us a big check and we slice it around. And if it wasn't that, it would be something else. Got they're it. not going in being like we need Bench Mob. Got it. But I'll also say, Rico, it's not always easy. Even the interviews, like college sports is not the easiest thing to no, like interview. without a doubt. College, without a college doubt. College kids can't say. But that's where it's like you get mad when I put you, – you, you got you to gotta keep shifting. Like it, it, you got to keep trying stuff, segment. And I, I don't know. That, that's honest advice. Fair enough. But it is it, it's definitely difficult. Like you guys have a powerful voice. So it, I, it's – a little uh, difficult again, when, like, again, that becomes wait, the go-to line. Hold on, hold on, JV, hold on, scumbags, hold on, hold on, cringe, again. pieces of shit, hold on. like, lucky to have a job, frauds. Like, <laughs> so, wow, you are it's lucky every to have fucking, a job. You want to go through my games? It's every again, lucky to have a job. It's you every, are lucky to have a job. You throw wanna, a high noon at Big T's head. You're I want to ask a, a question here because I, I, I'm not a rider right now. I denounce my ridership. Rico's mad at me because of this Greg Gard thing. Rico never said thank you for filling in for him. He never said thank you for retweeting it. He never Definitely said thank did. you. I did. Definitely. We're doing a new show today, Dave. They asked me if I could be the first guest on a bracket buzzer game, our show. I was like, of course I can. I don't know. I give you I give you interviews for Bench Mob. Like, I I don't know how I can support him a hundred times, and then when he atta- he he does something that's lame with, with against my coach, and I respond, I'm the bad guy. I don't understand that. That makes no yeah, sense he had to me. No choice, but I mean, if you did that like Jawan or somebody, I, I you have yeah. to come back over. And that. I will say, hand up, Putin's got me in a weird mood where he's talking about nuclear stuff, and I was just sitting in my house. I was like, I'm going nuclear on Rico. I, I did think that. I was like, I'm going to hit the nuclear button. I did think that, but that's I don't understand how I can't like. You don't want us to interact with you unless it's positive. Then it's going to be a bad that. thing. I'm not saying that. Well, then what? Wh- What's going on? It's Miko Bosco. You're saying build it and build it and build it. You got the, and I've the, helped. The narrative I, is like I, I don't get like you're saying the casual listeners, whether you guys believe it or not, like people like literally like worship you and take your whole fucking thing. That kid the kid did the fake rundown for two years on YouTube and would tag you every day and would go like this. Like they literally like imitate but, you. But, so that's every but, now tweet. Every tweet, every reply, every DM, every fucking – it's everything. But under that so like same – So, like, you're – okay, so, all right, so, like – But under that yeah, same – Yeah, we'll build – like, maybe have that conversation of, hey, just shift. And it's always in a public – Rico, form. did you We're see always the look of you guys in front stage. of Jersey Mike's? Did you see what got it looked it. like? Always come back – you got it. You got it. You're right. You're did right. you see what it looked yes, like in I front did. of Jersey Mike's? I did. I did. I did. Did you take a nap after you saw it? You picked you picked that one part. part that's what that's I what you saw. Got. All right, I got it. Rico, got it. what what you just said? Though, right, so then at it this can't point, work. Wait, let me talk. Let, let me just, talk. Let's let me just, talk. Let's let me talk. Wa- I'll just move let me it. talk. You're saying pivot. Just just wipe it. Let me talk. Just wipe it. Let you me think talk. We suck as it is. Gaz like knows the Matrix. Right, let's just. Wipe I mean, it. like uh, what is no Men in Black? What is the will? Men in Black. Men in Black. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. Rico, want me to do it, Rico? What you just said. Do you want me to wipe it? It's been a two-year fruition. Sounds like that's what you want anyway. So I don't. What you just said, though. Do you want me to wipe it? <laughs> I literally okay. filled in for you. I, I understand that. So I I, if everyone, if everyone uh, like follows us, and then I am as supportive as I could possibly be, I can't. I do not support another podcast more than I support Bench Mob. And I'm not asking for a fucking handout. Or a pat on the back. It's just crazy that one. I'd say one negative thing about Rico. He fucking loses it. That's crazy. And Rico, by the way, I don't even know for your show. Like, I, if I said, it's like, what would I do if I had a college basketball? Like, I don't really fucking know. It's hard to come up with those like money segments that are different, interesting, and knowing you can be truly off that. I don't know, but you got to do it because it's not growing. I got an idea. What if he gets the national championship correct? Well, then then it becomes a real, you know, then it's credibility. 
But you were behind the eight ball with that Gonzaga pick. The Gonzaga pick hurt us. And then you want to go did. serious. It did hurt us. Oh, it did hurt us. All right, so that's where we're at now. Tomorrow night when What's this up? comes out, every comment, every tweet, that's no, what it'll be. So that this hasn't so, been negative. And you wonder, like, the world, like, why do I, like, this is where I'm at. Like, it, But this hasn't been negative. This is Rico. where we're at. I have a failure of a career. No. The no. audience thinks you're a failure. That's no. that's where we're yeah, at. Yeah, but Got if it. we press Create that you do. men All in right. black, everyone wipes everybody. All right, so that's everybody. where we're at. Got Rico, I, I do think these two guys did offer you some very good advice, like truthfully. Yes, like, I know there was Eddie. an element, like. Eddie, he just gets mad Eddie, at the us. the narrative coming out See? of this would be, why would I listen to it? Why would I support it? I get Dave it. Dave and Dan, no, the fucking gods of everything, say no, it I sucks. I didn't say that. I'm not saying we didn't the, say it's that. the narrative. Said more the Dave. It's more Dave. I apologize. It's it's the it's the narrative Wait, of how what? it's gonna go. You know that's how it's gonna go. I I am I am like if if you if you stacked up how I've supported Bench Mob to 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 say that I've shit on it is crazy to me. That's like an insane old thing to say. I I interact with with Marty and Jake about the Wisconsin not being in the bracket. If you don't want me to interact, I'll stop interacting. This is nuts. Like, you always – it's Miko. Stop saying Miko. Why don't you apologize to me for once? Why don't you say thank you for once? Maybe I'll be a rider again. But you can't do it. He can't even do it right now, Dave. I, I, I don't think we've been that hard on you, really. I've said a million times, Rico, I don't know what podcast will totally work. But numbers are numbers. You don't want to say thanks or sorry? Or I did say thank you. No, you didn't. Find yes, it. I did. Find it. He can't find it. He never said thank you. I got to go through f- four days of hateful texts at 1130 at night on a Sunday. Hateful. I might have got my nuclear option, just so everyone knows. Uh, I, I, I sicked Stanford Steve on him, too. <laughs> I texted the crack card thing to Steve and myself and Rico, and Steve is he's a, he's a, he is a critic. And it was, I was just sitting in my house just being like pressing all the fucking no. codes. There is an element to where you understand what Rico's saying though, right, Dan? What? what? Like just from like, you know, pretty much anywhere. If, if like, if well, Dave will say something, it'll become a narrative sure. and people won't. Sure. But I don't think that applies to me in this case because I literally have been so supportive of Bench Bob and I cannot, if I don't respond to the Greg Gard thing, people would be like, what are you in the hospital? Like how... I have to. He knows that when he does it and he doesn't land, I'm going to respond. I have to. That's insane for me to think otherwise. That's a fact. Eddie, did you see what they look like in front of Jersey Mike's? <laughs> I did. But it what? couldn't have been a more depressing look in the world. But like, but like Rico said, did you take the one turnover? Like, is that like Do you know maybe what? there was a good – you know what it looked like? It looked like when Dave and I did the Dumb and Dumber 2 tour, it, and we were in front of Ohio State frat party, or the one we were in front of Florida State when there was like, we had to literally wake up Florida State frat guys to come and stand sadly behind us. That's kind of what it looked like. And you know what we do? We laugh about it. We say, look, correct. this is fucking stupid. We'll, we're going to get better. Like, I don't know. It's a funny picture. We, I leaned, I, like, how many times I got to lean into We leaned into the West Virginia. Like, you're saying lean into it. We've been doing, like, but at a certain point, where it's a dead, like, wh- what do we do now? It's a dead end. Like, I don't but, know. But, Gat, Gat, Gaz, you have time for a sit down. Like, you have any ideas? Like, what? I, I don't understand what you want me to say. To me. This is why I'm not a I don't a know what you want me to say. This is why I'm not a rider for everyone at got home. It. The reason why I'm not a rider is I tell got Rico, it. I give him advice. He does not listen to anything I say. Got it. I can't be a rider for that. And again, you played that clip. From me in the beginning of the show, it is true. I'd love for it to be a very, very successful, successful, mildly successful, whatever. I want that. I don't know why you think I wouldn't want that. Got it. It's like a chicken and egg, though, at this point. So, like, do we have free reign to just keep to go to play? Like, I'm not, we're not asking that. Like, everything we're doing is so we're not just getting in the car and going to games. Do you, you think that will change it? Like, if we're going to more games, if we're covering weird shit? I, I don't sex, know like, that. Don't, you, like you said, it doesn't. It move, like I don't know that just dominates. going to the games does anything unless you have a plan and prepared to create a certain type of content. Like to me, when you guys get to a game, 
It's kind of like show up and whatever happens, happens. And again, the storm chase is very unique, but there's a very clear to find it's like so easy to follow and you get hooked and again that's not that they have it's a very unique thing i don't get what's going on when you guys go to games necessarily and what exactly can you do like well that I, but I that's it. that's we're that's interacting it. as we're inter i mean it's i don't all right Okay, Dan, you all right? Yeah, you no, seem a little I'm, upset. I'm not a rider because he won't say thanks right. well, or sorry. Yeah. There's he, not going to be much to ride anymore anyway. So that's whoa. I don't know where we're at. Thanks for the time. Whoa. We're no, no, very, no. It's very, no, no, no. You're not going to leave on that. Nightmare. That's what? where we're at. Like, we're, get, we're getting like I read the newspapers. I saw the meeting. Like I know what's How going on. How is this your worst nightmare? You have a job for it's, life. It's, Okay. All right. But wait, you, got it. all I'm saying is if you said thank you once, I, I would probably right, become a rider. Don't ever, Rico, Rico. You didn't. You never said thank you. Rico, we'll always ride. Got it. No, There's not always... me, Dave. Not me. All right. I'm out. I, he won't say thank you to me. He won't say sorry or I thank you. I, I definitely one said two. it. He, look at it. He won't even do it. I said it. Thank you. you Somebody's going to make sure it. he no, takes a didn't. nap after Got this. It. All right. I'm out for the rest of the week. You didn't do it. Week. Wait. What? It's Monday. It's Monday. It's also March. I don't have a place to sit. Okay. You, I said office. you could I have trigger. off. Trigger. 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 He's allowed trigger. to say that. Trigger. Trigger. Can you? Trigger. I'm, t I'm, tr <laughs> I'm, come, sit down, sit down. He's yelling. He's triggered, right Dan. Sit, he needs sit a nap. Down, sit down, sit down, nap. sit down, no, sit down. Crawl sit down. under the desk, take a nap, put come the lights back. off. Come back. You know I, let's end on a better note you know than this. It. You fucking know it. That's where it's at. I, Shut I the lights, let him take a nap. Had. You knew what I, I had. And I that's want, where it's at. So I it's like, I knew what I had. What? I want. Nap. Let's, I want to ask go. a I got to go. I got to go. From I'm gonna need an he's going to take a nap. This is on you, Dan. If he loses it, he's triggered. He's going to take a nap. That's true. That's true. I will, I will stand up. If he does, if he hits anyone in the next five minutes, I, I'm resigning. I don't know why, like, why you only listen to the negative when we're telling you positives as well. Like, I've given you ideas. I think you've been doing a, a, a good job. I do. I mean, the numbers, the numbers. I don't know the numbers. I'm, I never know the numbers. That's a Gaz and Dave thing. Why, why are you coming away from this being like, oh, we're fucked? Why not come away from it being like, hey, let's think of some new fucking ideas. Let's think of some new ways to hook people, to get people involved, to, to find a way to make March a memorable March. I, that's how I would look at it. So let's come up with one fucking idea. And it doesn't necessarily even have to be like a podcast. It could be a repeatable video segment. There's a lot of stuff. Like, right. I find super fans interesting. Maybe you, you know, instead of doing the coaches or players, you go, like, with a super fan. I, I don't know. It's yeah. just, but you just sit down, brainstorm, come up with some concepts. Yeah, I like super fans. I also think there's something to be said about the anatomy of a fan that I've always been interested in. Like, can you find, like, like Purdue, right? Purdue's got a good team. They have a tortured past. Doing, like, a little, like, hey, this, this is their tortured past. That would resonate with Purdue fans. It also gets people to listen and be like, oh, shit. I didn't know about this, this, and this. You got one? Cinderella segment, C toss on a wig, pick a team. Ooh, I like Cinderella segment. Cinderella segment. Um, All right, yeah, we'll figure it out. Maybe doing short clips like your favorite. Like March Madness is the best because of the memories we have, right? A lot of these guys who make the memories are not like NBA stars. So maybe doing like... A, a quick like maybe it's like a five to seven minute video that we can put up on youtube that's like behind the moment like get fucking uh what's his name faruka uh what's his name ali faruk manesh. ali faruk manesh from northern iowa like doing like a little behind the scene almost like a, a 30 for 30 short like getting you ready for march madness that would be sick if you go back he one shit on us for going to michigan in a thing that was sold so what are we supposed to do now just start adding up the bills what? Like, Wait, no, but that's right. you can do that all with Zoom. You can literally, right. you can literally get Ali Farouk Manesh on the show. Yeah, you I can get this. whoever was defending him on the show. He's assistant coach at Colorado State at Texas. So there you go. 
So I why aren't we doing I, that? I, I don't like know. Like what? You know, like a quick. I'll help you with that too. I'll help put it together. I if you if you put right. it in front of me right like now. Like I said though, now we're, we're airing video. this. Got it. It's a we're a little behind the eight ball though to, to have aired it out on a public stage a million times of like JV pieces of shit scumbag ass. Like just if we had a closed door meeting, I'd be more receptive. I've to had it. closed we're door meetings. We're so fucked. I've had closed door meetings with you. Got I've it. given you all my ideas. I've brain dumped a million times to you. We're now here, and you you literally won't listen to what we're saying. Got it. You were also. This is why I don't ride. You had never brought you. I've unavailable I, for the up? past month because you tried to murder somebody in the office. Right. I absolutely brought up maybe not that exact idea because, like, obviously I don't have a million hours a week to brainstorm, but we're brainstorming right now for you. I brought up different ideas for sure and told you this is what you need to do instead of maybe the straight sports talk. There's one right there. A three-minute video of fucking Homer Drew and, and that play, and it doesn't even have to be him. It could be someone else on the court. I would watch that in a second come March. It's the best. Thought, yeah. I mean, in, I, I, if you go back, when, like, in articles and past, and it, it was so good, it sticks out in my head, but when Manzo wrote, I think it was, what, God's Last Night in Providence, like on God Sham God, the year Providence. There's so many stories. It's just trying to come up with, like, I don't know, different, unique stuff, and it's not easy because college kids can't talk as freely as other, but there's the rivalries. There's yes. all the stuff that you know you can pile into so you know who was in the locker room when fucking bobby knight i'm fucking sick and tired of losing to purdue like yeah shit like i don't know and it, but there's a but no, the stories that we think are interesting though is that i guarantee to resonate with an 18 to 25 year old yes if you pick the right well actually All i don't right. know if you you want show me the list first Fl it. villanova flute girl Villanova flute girl having a 100%. fucking 90 second short about her. The fucking fat Rams head guy from Colorado State. Like that, those things, the St. Bonnie's fans that wear the fucking beer on their head. Like there's a million and, and, little and things. I, like TJ, who isn't my favorite person, but that video of him at Rutgers when yep. he runs. Like that's the stuff. I don't know how to get it necessarily, but that's what resonates, and you see it instantly, and it hooks you. For better or for worse, Rico, and you're going to say I'm being negative, the things that actually have caught my attention have been like the four of you guys in front of Jersey Mike's because it's preposterous. But like a forced one-liner, I don't know. It didn't. These are the things. I mean, Coach K's last game at Durham on Saturday night, or maybe that's not, last UNC game. I don't know. Let's get fucking Psycho T. I want to hear from Psycho T how much he hated Duke. It doesn't have to be a long interview about, like, what are you doing now? But just, like, it could be quick. It could be social. Like, or if you had Psycho T or anybody, like, top ten players he fucking hated at Duke or hates and why. Or they, yes. There's just, like, I don't know. And I don't have the – because I don't. you don't always know. My point of this, and we're going in circles, is I, I – Think you think it's going great? It's not. I didn't say it was going great, which I mean. I just want you to be receptive to ideas. I'm not comfortable. You definitely always build. It's not like we're we're not. I'm trying to help. I I, I, I will help All with right. ideas. I will constantly help with ideas. You don't listen to the ideas. You just get angry about it. I'll tell Jake and Marty the ideas. I don't know what else I can do, Dave. I I I am a, I am a rider in name only. Like, if you looked at me, if you saw me walking down the street, you're like, there goes a fucking rider. Because that guy, he supports Rico. Unfortunately, I'm not, because he won't say thank you once. So, I, I am not a rider. But if you saw me, you'd think I'm a rider. Because all my actions are rider, right? Like, it's confusing. I know. Nobody's rooting for Rico Bosco more than me. Got it. Got it. Maybe me. Maybe me. Make sure he takes a nap, please. Was uh, a lot, lot. That was that was tense. That was tense. He was upset. I don't think that show is constructed properly, but that's up to him. I don't think that three is the right mix. What do you think is the right mix? Who's the host? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Jake, Rico, Mush, none of them to me are hosts. Re Jake is that guy. Mush uh, is kind of like a role player in it. And Rico needs someone to stir the pot. Like, Rico's his best when Rico's Rico. But who is 
I don't know that's the right mix. I know it's Rico's baby, and he's passionate about it, but I don't know that's the right mix. But that's up to him. And those shows that work, figure it out. But he should know it's not working as it is. It just isn't. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like you said, numbers numbers do speak for themselves. It is second season, so maybe there could be growth, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's not going to grow unless there's an acknowledgement that we're not coming after them, but things have to change. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, uh, that's really it. The, really, the last thing I have is Frank the Tank wants to protest the MLB protest. Any pointers? No, I mean, <laughs> I think he wouldn't be alone in that, to be honest. Oh, and then Trent, they left his scene out of The Bachelor. Bullshit. What, did he fly across the globe for that? Yeah. That's bullshit. Sucks. Fuck yeah. them. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, Dave, good luck with your procedure. That's it for today, everyone. I may bail on it still. I'm that nervous about it, but yes. <laughs> uh, that's it for today, everyone. That's it for this week. We will uh, see you next week. 